Today's interview is about a very important decision of the um, enlarged board of appeal of the European Patent Office. It's uh, G2 of 21. And I have an interview guest today. Philip de Corte is head of IP crop protection at Syngenta. And the opponent in this particular case was Syngenta. So thank you very much for being here. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Good morning, Rolf. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Philippe. So um, the patent in question was a patent by Sumitomo Chemicals about um, insecticide composition, I think. Um, can you maybe briefly summarize the case before it landed at the Enlarged Board of Appeal? So the listeners and viewers have a better understanding uh, what this is all about. Sure. So this uh, indeed is a patent, <clears throat> excuse me, by uh, Sumitomo Chemical Company. Uh, they, the title says insecticidal compositions, which is a very good title because that's what it is. But more specifically, it's about insecticidal mixtures. It's about mixtures of two classes of known insecticides. So the, the alleged invention is that if I take a member of class one, and I take a member of class two insecticide and I combine them, then the effect, the insecticidal effect of the mixture will be more than you would expect based upon the respective values. That is called synergy. Now, synergy uh, clearly exists, that's uh, for sure, uh, but synergy is a unexpected result. Uh, it's rare, it's unexpected, which means that, as I have said in other presentations, it's a sort of Harry Potter wand because it makes your mixture almost immediately inventive because you, it's clearly unpredictable. Hence, it is uh, almost per definition a um, invention. However, it means that you also that you need to measure it before, because you don't know what, whether it will uh, occur or not. So that was the that's the alleged invention and the patent. So Syngenta opposed, uh, we opposed on all grounds, but in the end, the discussion was about, well, um, can we, based upon the test results that were in the patent application, confer uh, this inventiveness over the full breadth of the scope? So that was, in the end, the contention. And what both parties did was we uh, there were, of course, test results in the patent application, limited, but there were test results. We, we provided test results claim or showing that the, there was no synergistic effect and it went back and forth. So in the, in, at the opposition division level, it um, was maintained, the patent was maintained, and Syngenta appealed. And again, what in the end the, the, the Board of Appeal uh, started to focus on was, well, to what extent can a patent applicant, patent proprietor, as the case may be, rely on what they call post-published data to further support the uh, inventive step scope, if I may use that word, um, but so based upon post-published data, meaning data that were not in the application, but that were delivered or published or used later. So that was the that was the question. And they felt that indeed this represented a question that um, should be referred to the enlarged board of appeal. And that's where where it ended up in the in the hands of the enlarged board of appeal. So the, the key word was, I think, plausibility. And um, is it plausible for the skilled person that the technical effect is, appear is uh, appearing over the whole scope of the, the whole range and the whole scope of the claim, right? That was the cru crucial question. Correct, yes. So, right. of course, you, you mentioned now the, well, I think I would say the, the enlarged board of appeal considers it almost a sort of forbidden word because they don't want to use it very explicitly, even though they recognize that it is a term uh, that that uh, refers to the issue. <laughs> but indeed, uh, it is about plausibility. And as uh, your viewers probably will know, plausibility has been uh, at the center of a number of decisions, both at the Board of Appeal, but also in national courts, plausibility played a big role in, in maintaining or, and or revoking, invalidating patents. So it is a, a question that is 
that needs an answer. So now that the decision is out, uh, the enlarged board of appeal decision, uh, what was your initial reaction? Well, uh, it was worse than I hoped, and it was better than I expected. Um, so um, I do understand that this was not an easy question for the enlarged board of appeal, and they came out with a decision that has a bit of an aspect of the Oracle of Delphi. Uh, Uh, you read into it what you want to read into it, uh, unfortunately. Um, and, and just as a fun fact, the day that the, uh, the, the decision came out, <clears throat> I got messages from uh, uh, persons that were at the opposite end of the question, if I may put it that way, or of the spectrum, and, and both said, ah, we won. So clearly they, you read into the decision what you want to read into it, even though I'm not completely agreeing with that, because I do think that they that the enlarged board of appeal did their best to say something. Um, so worse than I uh, hoped for is because we really wanted a clarity. I, I must admit, in a way, I was agnostic whether it would have now have been yes or no to the question. What we wanted is clarity. We wanted to uh, enable the examiner in the first instance, the one who is confronted with a patent application first, if I may put it that way, with a tool to say, look, you have shown this invention based upon the evidence that is before me. You have shown this. The rest is very speculative, and I do not think that that is supported. So we wanted a, a clear guidance And a, and, a, and a strong tool, I don't think, given the fact that indeed both uh, uh, extremes of the spectrum will see uh, <laughs> their position confirmed, I, I don't think it gave that. But nevertheless, I do think they did say something. So the tool is there, I think, uh, but, but it is weaker than I hoped for. So why is, then, is it better than you expected then? <laughs> well, indeed. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's better than I expected because I was afraid that the Board of Appeal would really uh, say nothing or basically uh, sort of restate the law, which would not give any guidance. And, I, and that's why I say, first of all, they had, they, they, the fact that they actually took, uh, took the question, that they admitted the case, meant that they recognized that there is a problem, so that, that's already good. It's not some, some kind of fiction that is uh, in the head of Syngenta. No, it's, it's, there is something there, and it needs an answer. And then when you read what they uh, try to say, uh, as, again, as strongly as they could, um, is, is, is something. Huh? It, it's... Uh, Uh, I think the Enlarged Board of Appeal had a very difficult task. Again, I, I want to recognize that this was a really challenging question. Uh, and, and one of the problems that I think they have is that uh, they feel that they need to stay within the four corners of the European Patent Convention. And obviously, this question is more about procedural law, if you, if you, if you will, uh, rather than the, the, the patentability as such. Uh, and then they have to rely on national law, which, of course, they are allowed to. But, um, yeah, not every uh, country has the same procedural law. So that is a little bit more wobbly, I would say. And uh, so what they want to do then is stay within the four corners of the EPC and say something. And I do think that they have, by saying that uh, it needs to be, the effect needs to be encompassed or the technical effect needs to be encompassed by the technical teaching and embodied by the same religiously disclosed invention is, well, is pretty, is pretty strong. Um, but, but, uh, and so that in that sense, it's better than I expected. Yes, uh, I agree. <clears throat> so that was a good outcome of the decision. Um, so I understand that you it's the first time that you took part in proceedings before the enlarged board of appeal and maybe not very many of us will ever be have the chance to be there so how was it like like uh, can you tell us more about uh, the procedure how did it feel like 
Yes, sure. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, it was actually a, a privilege and an honor to do that. I, I really uh, and I enjoyed it. Uh, I um, it was actually quite efficient. I had also that was also better than expected. I was was dreading a bit that it would uh, take a long time. It didn't. Uh, I think the uh, enlarged board of appeal. Uh, you you really had the the feeling that they were on top of what. Uh, the we had the submissions uh, because, as you know, there were many amicus curiae letters as well, which does not make it always that much easier. Um, but but so I had the feeling that we were uh, that our case was was taken very very seriously. Um, one thing that I had to say is I do think, uh, and here I'm sympathizing with the board of appeal, who was the referring board of appeal. It is I do think that the 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 way or the conditions to refer something to the enlarged board of appeal are too strict. And it leads to complications or to a complicated uh, formulation of questions because the, the, the board has to show that there are these two contradictory bodies of, of, of uh, decisions in the board of appeal decisions, which, which is not always that easy. You can, it, it's, it's easy to say that or easy to think that, but it's not always easy to prove that in, uh, on, on paper, so to speak. And, and it leads then to a sort of uh, manipulation of the question so that it can be uh, put in, 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 in uh, before the enlarged Board of Appeal. And I do think that some aspects of the question uh, get then lost because now you can read this question as, well, about, well, it was, I know that the enlarged Board of Appeal did not use the word plausibility, but it seemed to be, is is the technical effect plausible or not? Well, that was actually not what we were saying. We did never dispute the fact that when someone measures a certain uh, synergistic effect, that it would not be there. What we were trying to find out is how far does that uh, result radiate? How much does that support the neighboring, if I may put it that way, uh, mixtures uh, and, and based upon one test result. So, so I think that aspect of the question got a little bit lost uh, in, in the whole setup of, of, the, of the question. So I think that is a, that I, I must say was, was a, well, an interesting uh, aspect. And, and I think that's something that mm, hopefully uh, might be discussed, how to ease or how to make it easier to refer questions to the enlarged board of appeal uh, so that you do not get um, hung up on on too formalistic uh, on a too formalistic way of asking questions yes uh, and uh, now that we are looking into the future um, how do you think this will evolve like this this particular case or this this case law well, about the plausibility? Yeah, oh. What, what what will the board of appeal make out of it? <laughs> well, obviously, you're asking me to look into the crystal ball. Uh, I am uh, obviously I'm not sure. I'm hoping that uh, the board of appeal sees it as we see it, and I'm sure that Sumitomo will <laughs> want the same. Obviously, but indeed, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, as the uh, English expression goes. Uh, we will see what what will now happen. I think um, uh, not only in our case, by the way, because I know, uh, as you probably are, and your viewers are probably aware, some some uh, uh, examinations were actually uh, suspended until uh, there would be a, an, uh, a decision in this case. So, uh, and and I also know for a fact that some national courts were waiting uh, on the decision. So, I think in the coming months, uh, it we will we will know more. Uh, and again. I am almost agnostic about the, the decision, as long as this now will create a more clear or a clearer uh, um, situation, a clearer uh, environment in which to, to work, I, I think I would be very happy. Well, um, this was a very fa fantastic interview and uh, to have a chance to talk with the opponent in this very prominent landmark case is uh, not very often. So I'm very grateful that you took your time to be in this interview. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Philippe. Thank you, Rolf.